and you're going to see some great clips from people like the man of the hour. Yes. Who Big we, deal. Who we got on the show tonight. None other than Mr. Bill Goldberg. Bill, thank you so much for coming on with yes, us tonight. Thank you very much. Very excited. You know, man, anything for you two gentlemen. It is an honor and a privilege to... Uh, be in your presence even on the phones. <laughs> well, we were just joking. Uh, you're Anything actually, the, you are our first and our only. first and only guest that we ever had that called in on the phone. So, man, we must really like you. Yeah, you're from the mountain. Man, you're like time, the- time, time, time is of the essence right now, and I think you guys know that. So, I, yes. I got to stay close to home. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's uh, well let, let let's cut to the obvious. Okay, so this week Monday night you were on Monday Night Raw. It's kind of been hinted at a little bit. You answered the call to Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar, and you are uh, coming back, and you're going to take on Brock Lesnar. Is it Survivor Series you're going to be at? Man, I don't know when or where. I just know that uh, I'm waiting for that phone call and assuming. <laughs> Assuming it's going to be tomorrow, you know, my pessimistic uh, way of looking at things, I, I, uh, I have a very short time window as it is, and I'm just assuming that it's drawing closer by the second. So I have no clue as to when it is, but, man, I, I just got to be ready. You know that. Well, we know that you are in the gym, your, your gym at your uh, house at the moment right now, lifting while talking to us. We're glad you're fitting us in. Yes, thank you. Oh man, are you kidding me? You guys, uh, it's it's the opportunity to take a break. Uh, that's all I've been doing <laughs> between between eating, eat, eat, eating, eat, yes. eating, going to the bathroom, training, and going to the bathroom, and then eating, and then sleeping, and then going to the bathroom and training again. I want to know, Bill. It's a, it's yeah. a Bill, nice break. I, now, Bill and I, for people who don't know, Bill and I kind of have a, have a long relationship. We hosted a lot of sh- uh, fights together, and um, uh, he's been uh, kind enough to open up his his home and his family's home to myself. And I've spent a lot of time with Bill, so I do know a lot about Bill's background and things that most people don't know. And I do know one thing. You told me you Thank used to God. you used to set an alarm to wake up in the middle of the night and eat and have protein shakes. Are you still doing the same thing? You know, um, unfortunately, I don't have to anymore because I don't sleep. So um, <laughs> it gives me something to do when I'm walking around, when that, that, I'm walking that's around happens, the house. That's what happens when you're old. You know, you don't sleep. Yeah, that's what they say. I mean, I, I guess it's true. You know, what the hell? I am old, so it's proof of, proof's in the pudding. <laughs> I mean, you, you you're working out twice a day, correct? At least three times, man. Wow. Three times, uh, three times, three days a week. I'm, you know, I, it is the problem here. It, it's a huge conundrum, man. I'm trying to gain weight, and I'm trying to get in sh- get in shape and uh, get big and strong and fast and you know effective and you know all those things at the same time. It, it, doing one of them is is pretty easy. If I want to get big, I can just eat as much as humanly possible and lift heavy weights well that my joints can handle, but. Man, I, I got to be in shape. I got to be able to run around that ring and do the things that I haven't haven't done in twelve years. I mean, it's a totally different cardio. But you know, I, I figured that if I cross train the way that I'm doing, I, I'm going to be prepared for anything. Because I, as I've stated in a number of interviews as of late, I've I've suddenly figured this thing called cardio out, which I never <laughs> even knew of when I played football or anything like that. So, but I also have found out that the skinnier you are, the the more stuff hurts. So it's it's a balance, man. I, I don't want to go in there at like two thirty, but then again, you know, I I don't want to go in there, uh, you know, overly uh, weighted down to where I can't move, you know. So well, when you have that weight on, that balance. When you have the weight on, that's some padding when you bounce, right? Yes. Now, how's the recovery going? Exactly. That, being a pro athlete myself, recovery is such a big part of of my day and my my regimen. I make sure I recover it with cryotherapy and uh, the Wim Wim Hof method for breathing. Cold therapy, you know, uh, saunas, all this different stuff, massages for phys- you know, all, all kinds of physical therapy. Are you doing any stuff like that? Man, you know, King Moe's called me, and Barnett called me, and Shamrock's called me, and all these people have called me and told me to do all this stuff. But I'm trying to cram. I, I, I you know, if it's not in close proximity to where I am, if I got to go up to LA and do it, it's just tough for me to do all this, st- do all the training, man. And then at the same time, you know, I, I'm making my son's lunch and picking him up and taking them to Muay Thai three days a week. So um, I, I, it's just a balance, bros. You know, it, I, That's why you guys got to come down and trade with me. It sucks. But <laughs> no. I, I got to farm guys in from everywhere. You know, Robert O'Burst is coming down. Josh Barnett's coming down. Uh, C.T. Pletch is coming down. Man, I got a whole freaking array of people, and it's just uh, and, and scheduling them in and trying to get that balance. You know, like I say, Razor's coming down on Tuesday. Hopefully you guys come down shortly thereafter or come down with him. And, you know, when I'm doing that stuff, I'm burning calories. And then when I'm not burning them, i got to replenish them and then add more. And it's just, man, it's just tough on you. The older you get, 
you know, I, I used to put on weight by eating three bacon double cheeseburgers before I went to bed, and I'd wake <laughs> up shredded. You know, but you just can't do that anymore, man. So. Yeah, it's like usually you got to do one or the other. You're either getting bigger or you're getting in shape. There's, but they're not the same. <laughs> those two don't go exactly. Hand. Now, well, you know what? I'm I'm actually accomplishing it because I'm I'm supplementing my diets, you know, with the right food. And man, I'm drinking Jesus. I'm drinking from six to eight shakes a day, dudes. And I mean, I'm tro- I'm probably throwing in twenty thousand, fifteen to twenty thousand calories a day. I'm just trying to, and I'm burning the hell out of it. So. It's just tough. It's just, it's just, it's a tough deal. But it's fun, man. You know, it gives me something to do. Well, okay. So let's let let's back out a little bit for people who aren't. You know, uh, let's not talk about the technical stuff. Let's kind of back out a little bit, and because there's so many WWE and professional wrestling fans in general who want to know, after I believe it's been 12 years, what. What has motivated Bill Goldberg to, to, to leave his to you know come out from from hanging out with his family, just being a, a husband and a dad, to come back to the world of professional wrestling and accept this challenge from Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar? You know what? When I was two ninety, I didn't say these things to the press because it was corny, and, and and the Terminator didn't wasn't supposed to have feelings. But you know, going around the country doing the two K promotion starting in January of the you know this year. Um, going around the world, I, I told you, dude, you know, I've eloquated to you how cool it was to be Goldberg again. And I'm a Goldberg every day at the house, even though neither one of my family members respect me very much. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, man, to be, hey, you guys know, you're superstars. Um, and when you can look at a kid at a children's hospital and he looks at you like you're God in some way, shape, or form, whether it be from athletics or from being an actor or whatever, whatever the hell it is, that is a gift that, you know, if you're given it once in your lifetime and you can share it with somebody, that's the coolest thing in the world. And, man, I've been given it so many times, dude, you know, by playing football at Georgia, by playing in the NFL, by being Goldberg in the WCW and the WWE and 12 years removed. I'm able to have that opportunity again. You know, the, the, the conundrum is that, you know, I risk my legacy. I risk going in the ring at 250. I risk, you know, doing, not being able to do the things that I, I could before. I risk, you know, showing a new generation uh, a, a weak and frail Goldberg in comparison. But, you know, I, I, it's my job to come back a thousand times better than I was before, just reinvent myself in a different way. And the one thing that I didn't touch on, which is the most important thing, is that, you know, uh, I, I did this for my son, man. Yeah, that's what uh, I was going to say next. You know, I, you know Gage, man. He, uh, he, if he listens to anything that I say, I'm having a great day. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and if I can put him on the front row and give him the opportunity to be backstage for hour upon hour and hang out with these guys and see how cool it is, you know, for as a kid, then it's my duty to put myself on the line and sacrifice the things that I have to sacrifice, whether it be my diet, my regimen, my training, getting my ass kicked by Simon Marcus, you know, going to Ludwig's gym, whatever the hell it may be. You guys choking me out and trying to paint my toenails, whatever you want to do. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I gotta, I got I gotta do what I gotta do because you know what? At 49 years old, like Couture and, and George Foreman did, uh, you know, I gotta and Hopkins and. You know, I, I could have, I could have tried to carry it on. And I don't know of a power wrestler that 12 years removed from retiring came back and was able to dominate people like I'm going to do. And, you know, that's just, that's what I do. And I got to turn back into that guy. And that guy's, the guy hasn't left. You guys know me. I'm always going to be that guy. It's just the physical limitations of age that prevent you and the opportunity for being that guy. I've got the opportunity and I'm fighting the limitations of age. So kiss my ass, both of them, and I'm going for it. That's all I can say. <laughs> that well was, put. That was awesome. So I, I noticed a couple things in there, um, and it made me think of some other things about your past and uh, your family. Um, the one thing that stood out to me is you said if I want to kick some people's ass. So th- are you saying that, that there could be more than one match in the future for Bill Goldberg and this might not just be one final, uh, you know, one final goodbye? There might be more in the future? 
Are you ruling no, it out? No, that's habit. That's that's habit. You know. Okay. This is my last deal, man. <laughs> you okay. Know, okay. I'm, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay a good good ass kicking on Brock, and, and I'm gonna ride off into the sunset. You know. Somebody needs to. So so you know, one thing I was thinking about is you know and, and I've been with you to I've been with you to see kids in hospitals. I've been with you to visit kids in um who've been locked up, kids that were in juvenile detention uh, before. <laughs> I've been with you to visit some troops, uh, both. Army bases, National Guard, and we've also visited some uh, some sailors in the Navy together. So I know you do a lot of a lot of charity type stuff and a lot just a lot of goodwill stuff in general. And I know you have you know, you know the kids matter so much to you. And I wonder if helping people in that if that comes from your father because I understand your father went to Harvard and your dad was a doctor, which is something you never told me. Yeah, he went to Hopkins and went to Harvard and he played lacrosse at uh, Hopkins and then he you know he played football at Oklahoma. And he was a Navy, you know, he was a flight surgeon and uh, in the Navy. And yeah, there's a lot of things that uh, my mom was a concert violinist. Yeah, but when I'm... Chicago Philharmonic, you know, I mean, it's a weird deal. So. so what I'm asking, though, is like the fact that your dad, you know, learned to become a surgeon and he was a doctor. And, you know, basically he's there to help people, whether they're in the military or not. Do you think that you gained a lot of that feeling as far as, you know, goodwill towards people and children especially? You know what? At the end of the day, it started a long, a long time before my father. I think we're lucky enough, and I'm not saying this to be a cocky ass, but I'm an alpha man, and I'm lucky enough to have the genes to care about people and try to change the world in a positive way. And uh, it started, you know, well before my father, but he very much instilled in myself and my brothers and my sister. And my mom had a lot to do with it. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think him caring for people at 2 o'clock in the morning when he gets a phone call rushing to the hospital, that has something to do with it. I mean, it's... I mean, know, he always instilled those things in us. There's there's no way around it, Bill. Somebody who gets up and does that kind of stuff or puts themselves on the line or spends their life dedicating, dedicating themselves to helping other people, I mean, that's... There's no way around it. That's an admirable thing. No, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, he, he, he surely didn't do it for the money. Not back in those days. Um, he did it for, it was a badge of honor for him. And, uh, you know, the fact that he uh, slipped up and was the doctor of some of my uh, girlfriends, that was an interesting, uh, <laughs> that was an interesting deal. <laughs> as, as a couple of girlfriends would sit in his office and they'd turn around and they'd put two and two together and see my picture on his mantle. So, uh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, he was, he was an OBGYN, by the way. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Hey, he's help, he's helping America. Yeah. Make America great again. Yes, make America great again once again, please. Absolutely. <laughs>